I just want to read this. Now, I've often said in my videos that you don't believe anything, right? You don't believe the, you know, the clickbait posts. You don't believe in YouTubers. You don't believe in anybody, right, when it comes to movies and, and stuff. The, the only people you believe are the ones that are actually connected, i.e. Um, people that are Warner Brothers. Now, granted, there's been times when, you know, you get, you get these posts like the Hollywood Reporter or Washington Post or whatever paper that's... Um, and they get what you call the exclusives, right? They get the nod from Warner Brothers that they are the ones to release the news. Now, up now up to the point until they say, okay, you can see it, right? Up to that point, even if it's like the day before, right? They'll, they'll just blankly say, no, that's not true, that's not true. You have the authority now. Yes, it's true. We have it. So they can lie basically right up to the point until Warner Brothers says that they can, that they have the scoop and they can now say it, right? So, in an interview with the Los Angeles Times, Warner Brothers chief executive Kevin Tishiara, I don't know if that's the second name. Discuss the studio's strong year at the box office, the success of Aquaman, and where things are at the slate of the DC Universe films. With films like Shazam, Joker, Wonder Woman 1984, and Birds of Prey all set to come out this year, Tishuara, Tishuara, I'm not going to call him Tishuara, I'm going to call, call him Tishu, okay? So, Tissue says, it feels like the studio is on the right track. We have the right people and the right jobs working on it. So, we have the right people and the right jobs. Right, okay, so, Zack Snyder, he wasn't the right person, was he? After you guys got involved and messed things up. Or you decided that BVS should be cut, uh, that you should remove Zack Snyder from his Justice League, the person that you know helped create the universe and had the big seven story arc. He wasn't the right person for the story, but for that, even though he introduced all these great actors to play like Gal Gadot and. Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck and you know the list goes on so I'm not actually too sure if, if you're actually positive that you've got the right people in the right jobs because you did have originally until you start until the company started messing things around right and now you know it's an after this whole plan thing of future movies and tying things together, that's all out the window. So, this goes on, right? Well, um, the universe isn't as connected as we thought it was going to be five years ago. So, five years ago, you know, roughly after Matt Steele, they had plans for BVS. After BVS, they were going to go into the Justice League and they were going to... Uh, they had... They had an idea. So basically, in that statement, it says they had an idea how to connect the universe. But just because they interfered and just because one film didn't do as well as they thought, because they interfered, they say, hmm, it's not as connected as we thought it was going to be because we interfered and picked it up, right? To be five years ago, you're seeing much more focus on individual experience around individual characters. Now I remember a lot of YouTubers and there was all the discussion and that they should follow the Marvel suit, right? And that they should do standalone movies first, then lead up to the the big team up, right? And 
Soon enough, I've, I I kind of agreed with John Campy at the time when when he says you don't need a big build up, you don't need to do it the Marvel way, right? You don't need all these standalone movies in order to get to the big one. As long as the film and the story is told well, you can hit it off. You know, I mean, you you take Lord of the Rings that that came out. Okay, so many characters, but you got the gist of it. Star Wars. A New Hope. You got the gist of it. All these characters and you didn't know the backstory. And look, you didn't need Luke Skywalker standalone story. You didn't need Leia standalone story. So it's... But because you guys interfered, you know, and because you thought just the name alone uh, would sell a movie and forget about the storyline, that's right. Oh, God. People that actually said that, that they're making a mockery by not doing a stand they must be jumping for joy. Even though I still believe that 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 you don't need a standalone movie. And if you followed Zack Snyder's plan, you know, from BVS, you know, and what I've heard about the Snyder Cut, there was a lot of explanation on who those characters were in the Justice League. Um before it turned into the Justice League. Right, so we want at some point move on. That's not to say we won't at some point come back to the notion of a more connected universe, but it feels like that's the right strategy for us right now. So so that doesn't mean we we come back to the notion of a more connected universe. So we all this talk about Flash and and having a multiverse all this talk about Ben Affleck leaving, he's no longer Batman. All this talk about Henry Cavill is waiting for the right director and stuff like that. Um, so basically, for me, I, I'm trying to read be- between the lines and saying, you're just waiting until you get more actors or different actors and things start to settle down for whoever's playing Batman or whoever's going to be playing Superman. right? And because you, you do a Flash movie that concerns the multiverse, then then in that multiverse you can basically have any actor playing Superman and Batman in a Justice League movie. Which then sort of throws out the need again for a standalone movie because you're getting a different actor playing a you know, a different Batman than the movie you've just seen. You get what I mean? Because because of the multiverse you could add you know, the Batman movie that's that's coming out or it's trying to get off the ground just now, right? Um, and then you'll have a Justice League movie that doesn't necessarily have to be the same Batman. So what? What? Why bother getting invested? It's, hmm. Hope we understand that. Mm. Right. Uh, individual cars. That's not to say we want at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I do? You have. So, so it's. As for Superman and Batman, he states, obviously, we want to get those two in the right place. Hmm. What did I just say? About the Batman and Superman? They want to get them in the right place? They want to get the actors in the right place? They want to get the... Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, in the right place. And we want strong movies around Batman and Superman. Now... For a long time, right, they said they needed to get the core heroes working first, right? And the core heroes is Batman, Superman, Wonder, well, got Wonder Woman working, right? So it's Batman and Superman, they need to get those, because that is the trinity. That is the world's finest. You've got to get them right. And they were right. But you just jumped the gun and you've mucked everything up, right? And they were... And you had the great Batman and Superman BVS. You had them becoming friends, and then you just you just messed with the character in Justice League. Uh, as for Batman, obviously we want to get those two in the right place, and we want strong movies around Superman. But Aquaman is a perfect example of what we can do. They are each unique, and the tones different in each movie. So it's going to be different. Yeah? So you're going to have a dark Batman, a different Aquaman's not. Of course, because it's all different people. 
the problem that Marvel has got for me, and, and I gave up on Marvel movies, is when I did watch them, you know, they're all the same character. It's all the same movies. The standalone movies all feel the same. But when you have something as diverse as Batman and Superman, mm. dark, light, you know, and that was just an iconic moment in BVS when it says Fight Night, you know, and uh, oh, it's brilliant. Um, uh, hopefully, um, a perfect example of what we can do. The reach unique and the tones different in each movie. Hopefully, Warner Brothers won't wait too long before getting things in the right place. For the Man of Steel. So they're still trying to get the Man of Steel, and Henry Cavill's right there, big and muscular as anything. Um, just that Batman's having plastic surgery and a voice thing, and probably Alfred as well. He's 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 getting plastic surgery, so you can change the face like like the Joker. But what do I take from that? All I take is they're still serious about Superman and Batman and getting them right. All the rest you could have probably thought of yourself. But this is coming from people in Warner Brothers. So they're not ready to give up on DC. DC is definitely not dead. Man of Steel movie, definitely not dead. This guy has been listening to the fans. He wants to make a Man of Steel movie. They just got to get what he says, the right people in the right position and everything else, even though he already had it. Well, that's my DC as uh, DC vigilante out. I take it, you know, it's it's good news. That's my truth. Catch you later.